I'm joyful to be here with the Panchu. Uh, the Panchu, you've been in a uh, couple of courses and programs of mine, and I've always so benefited myself from your presence there. Um, and I think everyone else has as well. And I just wanted to bring you here to share with the others who are watching my my YouTube channel. So welcome to you and good to have you here. Thank you so much, George, for having me. And this is a beautiful opportunity for me to share the work I've been doing for the last couple of years. Yes. It's always been a great pleasure to be in conversation with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we're going to talk today about emotions uh, and regulating them, as well as uh, the topic of change, which I know a lot of people watching this are going through some big personal changes, professional changes, um, or would like to perhaps. And so we're going to we're going to talk about these important things today. Um, first, I would just want to say a few words about your background. So uh, you are a life coach and mentor. Uh, I think you are the quintessential life coach and mentor. <laughs> And you help clients with, with the emotional stuff too, the anxiety, overthinking, confidence issues so that they can experience deeper happiness and fulfillment. Excellent. And in the era, in the era of AI, <laughs> you help clients with their HI, their human intelligence. Can't wait to talk about that. And your, uh, your work is deeply rooted in your, your lived experiences, your authenticity, love, and spirituality. And I, I just want to say, I mean, uh, there are many people who might use those words to describe their their energy signature in their work, but I really have felt that from you. So I wanted to say that that is authentic. Uh, so um, let's begin. Let's begin with emotions, right? Um, you work with a lot of people on emotions and you also have your own story about um, feeling happy by first feeling sad. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. And here's the thing. Um, everybody I've met, they have, have been wanting to be happy, wanting yeah. to be peaceful. Yeah. And whenever I ask my clients, say, let's, you know, uh, go back in time and tell me one moment when you were happy. And guess what? A lot of people would not be able to tell one incident when they were truly happy. And that was me as well. Um, so I've been married for almost two years now, closer to two years. And if I remember, yes, if I remember correctly, my wedding day was the first day I could actually feel happiness, like genuine happiness. Um, and so there's this Indian tradition where um, a day before the wedding, they put turmeric on the, you know, bride and groom and a lot of people will touch you. And I've been a little bit of touchophobic in the past couple of years due to like past trauma and stuff. So I was really worried, like, what will I do? You know, so many people touching me, at least like two dozen people. And guess what happened when they started, you know, putting turmeric on me? I felt so much of like divine blessing, like, ha like people took time from their daily routine and came there to celebrate me. Um, so I cried. I was, I was like, oh my, like, is this happiness? Like, what is it? And after the wedding, when, um, again, on the wedding day, my wife came down the aisle and I was like, I started crying. I did not plan for it. Uh, and there was happiness. There was sadness. There was like, I don't know, a lot of emotions coming up. Um, and when I talked to my therapist after, you know, that incident, I was like, what happened there? And something I realized because I've been working for like six months before that, doing really deep in a work, actually allowing my sadness to come up. I never did that before. I've been in therapy, you know, on and off therapy and coaching for like a decade. But only six months before wedding, I started doing that inner work and started feeling my sadness, feeling my nervousness, anxiety and helplessness. Um, so what I did there was, um, that's what my therapist told me, I realized I grew my capacity to feel happiness as well. The reason most of us are not happy is because we do not allow ourselves to be sad. And this works in duality. Wow. Yeah. That is really powerful. And yeah, the, the capacity to feel, right? Like, like if you have been blocking or avoiding certain emotions, you might be blocking or avoiding your own capacity to feel even the positive. And it's, 
which which then brings up this um this idea this topic of you know and i i i think you have a you have a diagram that i want you to show show everybody like like this i know we're going to you know th this topic of like the ups and downs of 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 life mm -hmm. and um we have this illusion right that well a, a successful and fulfilled life is just the it's just the ups <laughs> that's all and then if it's if it's somehow down then it's a it's an it's an aberration uh, it's a mistake and we're supposed to quickly correct that or avoid it and then go back to the up. Mm -hmm. And so how does that, what, what does that mean for you now? Cause I mean, typically, however I experience you, it tends to be happy yeah. and peaceful. <laughs> so then how do you, how do you, do you still practice feeling the, shall mm -hmm. we say darker emotions? Yeah. Um, thank you for asking that. So how do I say that is, um, the amount of happiness you're going to feel is going to be directly proportional to the amount of sadness you allow yourself to feel. Okay. And there's a lot of sadness in all of us, a lot of happiness in all of us. And unless we tap into one thing, we cannot tap into the other one. Right. And all of us have these limits of a nervous system within which we feel safe enough to feel anything. Right. Um, so babies, they only know hunger and crying and happiness. <laughs> they don't know the jealousy. They don't know the, you know, excitement. They simply know, you know, how to smile and how to cry. But when you continue growing, and there's a beautiful picture uh, of Disney Hotstar inside out. Uh, when we start growing, we start developing newer emotions, new emotions of, you know, jealousy and envy and anger and betrayal and, you know, all these different things we experience. And if we actually want to grow the emotional strength that we have, if we actually want to taste different flavors of life, we need to grow our capacity to feel things, right? And I'll share this uh, beautiful art that I've created. <laughs> um, so we have this nervous system boundaries within which we feel safe enough to experience anything. So let's take an example of, you know, let's say you, George, um, you are doing this for like 15 years. And if somebody, a client cancels a, you know, meeting with you, you'll not care about it. You'll get over it. Like in two minutes, like, ah, I'll focus on something better. But you think too highly of me. <laughs> two minutes, maybe, two days, one of those, <laughs> somewhere in between. <laughs> so let's take an example of, let's say, you know, it takes you 24 hours to get over it. But what would have happened when you started like in year one? Yeah, that was beyond your capacity. So it would have maybe taken you like a week, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so the emotional strength is how do we stretch these mm. nervous system boundaries we have, the upper right. limits and lower limits. Mm -hmm. right? and if something again really small happens or really big happens, depend defines how much we are reactive to that particular thing. Right. So life is a lot of ups and downs. And whenever something goes beyond just a little bit, that's like a scary point for us. Yes. We go into reactive mode. We go into analysis paralysis. We become contracted, all of that, right? And sometimes it's a super scary point. For example, a death or even a birth or like what happened with me? I got married. I was happily yes. single. I'm happily married, but still super scary point, yeah. right? I, I remember I cried and I, I, I did not know what I was feeling was too much all at the same time, right? So something that's very important for us to learn here is how do we practice just enough? A lot mm -hmm. of people are scared to change because it's too much. People who have not cried for three decades, you suddenly see them in therapy and like they start crying. That's not a very realistic expectation, right? right. So how can I practice the growth just enough? If I have never allowed myself to feel sadness, how can I allow myself just enough? And the body knows what just enough is for you. Yes, it's, you know, it makes me think of the uh, the, the idea of fitness, right? Like, um, just like when we train our physical bodies, we, um, you know, it's, well, kind of like stretching. Like if you don't ever stretch, you don't have the capacity to stretch widely. And if you stretch too much, you hurt yourself, of course. 
um, if you don't ever exercise, then if you go overboard, then you, you know, you really can harm yourself. Um, but it's like just enough exercise, just enough stretching allows us to stay fit and have more flexibility of movement and, um, you know, stamina of energy, right. To go throughout the day. And so I really love that you're applying this to emotions as well. And just like seeing that as a muscle to like, okay, we have, so, so, so then the question for me is um, when hard things come and happen uh mm. oftentimes there are things that are beyond what we think we're capable of um for some of us it happens more than than others but it all happens it happens to all of us how do you <laughs> how do you regulate yourself in that moment it's like oh it's more than you you know a typical day might might have you know something like this but then sometimes right sometimes it's it's like this so how do you then how, how do you deal with that basically yeah so then again understanding what just enough is for you number one if mm. it's for example you know just another client you know canceling the meeting or not making the payment or you know something that has happened to you like 10 times in the past um giving yourself a time a little bit of time and when something super scary happens some birth some death or some really big transition um how can you allow yourself grace in that time and realizing that this is beyond my capacity in this moment. Like how can you allow yourself to be more human? How can you allow yeah. yourself to be perfect and not yes. know the answer? Yeah. 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 I love that. Well, allow yourself some grace and like, just, it's like, you don't maybe another way, like you don't have to go to the extremes of emotions to match what seems extreme for the moment. You know, and, 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 you know, know, know that it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling. And just, I, I like that. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to use that my, myself. And thank you for that tool. Uh, something that comes to my mind, uh, you know, on the same lines, um, we don't always need to feel emotions. Like if you want to watch Netflix, because you had a really terrible fight, or, you know, fight with your wife, totally acceptable, like, totally okay. Watch and, you know, go and have a Netflix. Um, on average, every month, I have one full day of Netflix, random series that I watch, like, and I allow myself. It's working really great for me. I don't want to change it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, really, really nice. Yeah, I, I, I do. I'm so grateful that I guess life, the universe, divine does give us the spaciousness to keep experimenting with different ways of regulating ourselves and uh, and, you know, gives us a, a lifetime, right? <laughs> and perhaps many lifetimes to keep on practicing these things and experimenting with these. And just like you said, there's grace given for, for, for these things. Um, okay. So I want to move into the topic that, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm such a fan of looking at AI tools and I'm, ex you know, have this such excitement about what the future can hold. Um, but AI stands for artificial intelligence. And I love that you have brought up this term HI, uh, human intelligence. And I, I agree with you, like as AI takes over more and more work from humans, the question is, well, what's left for humans? And I like that you bring in, well, let's start with, well, what's truly human. So I just want you to talk about this, this idea of human intelligence and how that yeah, what that means for us as we move into the more and more the AI age. Yeah, and one of the really interesting things that I've noticed as I'm, you know, also um, observing the AI trends and everything, playing with Chat GPT and all of that, um, is what makes us humans is the humanness, and humanness is about the ups and the downs. The humanness is about the adaptability. So, like. Uh, traditional education wise, I graduated as a biotechnologist. So I've studied biology at, you know, graduation level. So one of the things, the first things that we learn at graduate level is who are humans, somebody who's flexible, somebody who can adapt, somebody who can reproduce, of course. So the adaptability and the flexibility is what makes us human. And that is simply not possible without actually feeling the emotions. That's why you may have noticed that a lot of people, you meet them after five years and they still have the same problems. <laughs> 
it, it's probably because they're not allowing themselves to, you know, grow up. They're being present. They're kind of avoiding the same problem. So it keeps up happening again and again and again. So one of the ways of actually becoming more human is to allow messy growth, not just growth, but messy growth. I love that. Yes. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot here to unpack because like you said, humans go through the ups and downs. AI doesn't at this time anyway. Like AI is is just neutral all the time. You know, you it's programmed. You 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 say something, it says something back. Um whereas we respond to all the stuff happening in life, we really respond ups and downs and like to allow that which we've already talked about in this interview like how do we allow how do we allow that and while staying um balanced and then you said flexible yeah totally i i love it when you said you meet someone after five years they're still the same I'm like okay um thinking about meeting myself from five years ago how much am i still the same <laughs> how, how how have i grown i think that's a, that's a good question that i'm going to ask myself like hmm, if i were to meet myself you know from you know 2019 or, or even 2014, uh, what parts of myself have, have changed for the better and what parts are still the same that I can maybe allow myself to, to respond, to be flexible, right? I, I love this so much. Um, so, so do you, um, yeah, I'd like, is that something you talk with your clients about, like this, this human intelligence and like, like, do you actually, do you bring in this term and, and yeah. Um, sometimes if the person yeah. is interested and more curious to explore these different terms, but uh, when I'm working with my clients, it usually shows up in a way that they don't want to feel, you know, anxious or they don't want to be angry or they, you know, they want to be more confident. They want to express themselves. They want to, um, so like right now I'm working with a couple of new leaders, like they want to embody that those leadership skills. So this humanness comes forward in different terms. Right. For some people, it's about how can I talk to my mom in a better way? How can mm -hmm. I have a better kind of my partner? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's true. It's it's like to be a leader is um all of the rest of life affects your leadership at work. <laughs> absolutely. And I, I I I love that. Um you have a favorite self-growth question. Share that with us. Um, and uh, so I've learned this question, I think like two, three years ago in one of the workshops I attended. Um, and I have, I'm working with my coach for like three and a half years now, like regularly. And I've given him this question. I said, you know what? Whenever I feel I'm in too much in my head, too much in dilemma, ask me this question. Uh, so the question is, how are you creating this? It's a little bit of uh, confronting right? It's a little bit of, you know, too much in the face. But when we feel centered enough to answer that, this question really, really puts you back into the creator driver's seat. Rather than, oh, this is because of the government, this is because of the environment, this is because of this client or this partner, this parent. Like, how am I creating this? What's my part in it? Mm, because if we are experiencing something in a situation, well, we are humans able to respond. And it's like our response is always changing and shifting whatever situation we're in. And a lot of times, like you said, we are, are not aware of our conditioned responses. So it's like, we just think we're being, we're, we're not doing anything, but we are everything, every, right? Every, everything, not just what we say and what we do, but even our, our facial expressions or our the energy that we exude in a situation is co-creating that situation. So I, I love I love that question. How are you creating this? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, bringing that into my to my own uh, situations as well. Um, well, let's begin wrapping up, and I, I want you to share your your one of your favorite tips for um, managing emotions. Yeah, here's the quickest and easiest one. Take a really slow, deep breath and slow down. Slow down the way you talk. 
slow down the way you walk, the way you drink your water, the way you eat your food, the way you respond to your messages, the way you behave and being in this world. So regardless of how big or small of a situation has happened, if you really slow down, it gives you that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, you know, pop culture reference. The Spider-Man instincts, the Spider-Man superpowers. If you watch the movie, you'll know that he's super slow. Like if there's a, you know, a tray of food, you know, dropping, he can quickly catch everything in his hands because for him, the time is really slow, right? How can you bring two seconds into one second? So just taking a slow, deep breath and witnessing what is happening around me, what is happening in me, outside of me and around me. Mm. I think that's the easiest way to come back to this place of emotional mastery and strength. I love that reminder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't think we can be reminded enough, um, especially these days with so much coming at us so quickly, change happening so quickly. Um, it's so easy to become habituated in this um, sort of quick cycle of day and night and just going through the motions. But you're saying, okay, when we take a breath, slow down, then you can activate your human intelligence. Right? Like then, then there's space for the human intelligence to really come in. Uh, thank you for that reminder. That's really good. And also, I think it's if uh, for those who are, are able to um, work with a coach, work with a coach like you, <laughs> you know, it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code in this game of life. You work yes. with a coach, you have your own personal advisor, you have this mentor, this guide or whatever different names we can use. Yes. Uh, somebody to support you. Yes. Yeah. A bouncing board so that you're not just in your own head and your own experience, but you have a, a neutral or loving third party, supportive third party. That's that's um, not your partner or your friends who might have a different relationship to you. This neutral third party is there to there. That's their job is to help you grow. And so, Dipanshu, thank you for being that that coach for so many people. And uh, I will definitely be putting your your link below this video, folks. Check it out for how to work with the Panchu. Um, what kind of person do you most love to work with? I, I don't want to put you, I, I am putting you on the spot <laughs> to answer this, but, but if, if you, if you think about your, your favorite clients, um, what are some of their characteristics? Yeah. Yes. So um, I've otherwise worked with, you know, people from 18 years old to like 69 years old. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Quite Amazing. right. It's been like half a decade I'm doing this almost. Yes. Yes. So I've been hundreds of clients. The most like average profile people who love working with me is number one, who are coaches who want to become, you know, build their business, either that or people who are usually like 24 to 35 in corporate people who have been leaders for a couple of years or who are entering the corporate and want to be leaders in some time. Um, and, you know, majorly women, I think 80, 90%. Uh, but honestly, somebody who wants to feel more of who they are. I think that's the real tick mark that I have. Somebody who's open to have this new perspectives. Oh, wonderful. Well, those who resonated with this interview, perhaps. Um, yes. So definitely check out Dipanchu's link below. Uh, Dipanchu, you're in India. And um, uh, so, and it's, and it's wonderful. I mean, you're, I, I've seen you at various calls. So you, you're very, very kind to be able to be flexible with your time to be able to meet people. Do you have clients in North America? Like, do you, where, where are your clients? Um, yeah, I have, even right now, I have a couple of clients from North America. My own coach is from Australia. I've had a couple of clients from, you know, uh, Middle East and Asia and then Europe. So I wow. have a worldwide. <laughs> I work amazing. less, but I work and, you know, spreading different times. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Well, um, I will also put the link to your social media below, of course, so people can follow your content and be blessed by it. So... Thank you, Dipanshu. Thanks for your, the work that you do and how you do it. Thank you so much, Josh. This was a really insightful conversation. And I hope whoever is listening, um, please let me know if there's any point that really resonated with you. Yeah, definitely. Comment below and share with us. Thanks.